Welcome back, everyone, to Sunday Night Fights. This is uh, Game 3, is about to get underway. So we see Korean Army actually had two uh, very decisive wins on Semwa, so it seems he has that match, that uh, map on lockdown, pretty much. Uh, I'm joined again by my co-caster, Taiko. Hello, Game Replays. I'm happy to be back, and I'm happy to be here on Engaville. Semwa has got me all gloomy with its weather, but Engaville is nice and sunny with all the flowers, and I can't wait to see... Korean Army and Bio Sparks, not Bio Sparks. What's his name? Contador. Again. Alright, so just before we get this match underway, let's get a good look at that intro vid. Hasta la vista, baby. Alright, we're going to jump straight into Game 3, so we are paused at the 5 second mark, and we're unpausing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, unpause, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, Angerville, a classic map, and with the Vanilla Factions as well, so we're going to see, well, hopefully see one hell of a show. Yeah, definitely, we had some speculation that, um... Korean, whatever his name, Korean Army, yes, Chungwu Park would be choosing some of the OF factions to maybe try and play with Contador's head, throw some crazy stuff in there, but nope, we got Vanilla on the most vanilla map of all. I guess the second most vanilla map. Samoa was the original beta map before Company of Heroes even came out. We were all playing Samoa in multiplayer against each other, so that's as far back as you can get. But I guess Angaville is the more traditional Company of Heroes map. We got all those cutoff points, and uh the sort of diamond shape, and everyone's just going right at each other with these nice shaped sectors. So when people make maps, they often try and copy Samoa, I've, or sorry, Angaville, I've noticed, is kind of the gold standard that everyone wants to equal. Yeah, I mean, Angaville is just one of those maps where um, if you're a good flanker, then it pays off, and if you're good at defending flanks, it pays off as well. So it's, one, it's a decently balanced map, although slightly... The general consensus is that it's slightly allied favoured, but it just depends on which side the Wehrmacht uh, goes for. Obviously the right hand side, there's the hedgerows, which are good for holding with MGs, but if you want to use packs, obviously the M8s can use those hedgerows to abuse line of sight. So some players will go for the left, whatever is more, more open, lay down some wire, etc, etc. But it seems Contador wants to go for the right hand side, which is where all the high resources are a lot closer together and easier to hold. Yeah, definitely, and that makes a lot of sense, too, because, of course, as the Wehrmacht, you're always worried about holding what you've got. Uh, allies always trying to be slippery and sneak around and cut you off, but uh, we actually do see a really fast cutoff going on by the Wehrmacht. Contador getting right up in Korean Army's grill, suppressing that rifleman squad at the cutoff point. He's probably going to force a retreat with his MG bike, Pio, trio, and uh, then he'll be able to get the cutoff going even before there's really many resources to cut off. Yeah, that was a really, uh aggressive machine gun. I mean, I've seen Seb do that quite often. He would literally just make a machine gun straight to the cutoff and uh, as the rifle caps in and starts walking forward, you know, they, they suddenly met with a machine gun, so uh, it can be pretty risky if uh, someone goes jeep first, but against rifle openings, uh, which are a lot more common, it's uh, pretty devastating. Yeah, and I can't let this go uncommented. On the right, we have my favorite matchup in Company of Heroes, the uh, Engineer versus Pioneer match, and normally that swings one way or another, but this time it was funny. They both broke off. Uh, Pioneers decided they're just going to stop fighting and go cap this VP, but no, the Engineers are out for blood. Oh, just kidding. They're laying some razor wire. But yeah, normally that fight goes one way or the other. The Pioneers are a bit better fighters, but of course, 
if they get unlucky and lose a guy earlier than the engineers, then it swings in the engineers' favor because they have the uh, the numbers on there. But wow, we have the f remix of the fight again. I just I just love engineers versus pyos. There's nothing more basic than that. Fighting it out mano a mano with those horrible crappy little grease guns. Yeah, those fights can go anyway. I mean, it's really down to just whoever gets more crits and whoever had superior cover. And it's annoying how they have a tendency to just jump out of cover and then just do something else completely different. Well, the thing is, they both have a lot of marbles in their pocket, right? Because they need marbles to repair the engine and some sort of weird World War II thing. So they're always dropping their marbles and they got to get out of cover, grab them back. It's really important. And, um, yeah, sometimes they end up dying, so it's unfortunate. But, uh, we haven't... MG facing the opposite way that you'd expect from the Vermont, but uh, it's helping him kind of hold off these Roughmen. This could be a desperate dance for Contador, trying to suppress all of these people with his machine gun while they move in, and he might lose his motorcycle here. Yeah, that's going down. Although maybe not. I don't know. 5% bug comes back with vengeance. Oh, explodes. So yeah, what do you think about the map control here? Obviously, uh, Korean Army really cut off and doesn't have... Well, it has a fair amount of stuff capped, but he's super cut off, right? Uh, well, he's managed to connect up the right, because, I mean, over there was just one Pioneer fight, which uh, Korean Army won, and uh, everything has just been focused on the left-hand side in terms of actual fighting, but, I mean, uh, Korean Army has also neglected to cap up that uh, connector. But, oh, this rifle squad... No, yeah, he's speaking get away. of Korean army neglecting things, he almost lost that rifle squad, and I'm not sure if that was because he wasn't paying attention, or more likely with him and his amazing actions per minute. I think he was just being really ballsy there, because the machine gun facing at that rifle squad, the one facing backwards, was packing up and retreating, so the only fire he was taking was from the two crewmen on the other machine gun, so I think he was just waiting to push that other machine gun off, and once he pushes the other machine gun off, that would make the retreat even safer. So that was a very dangerous game he was playing, but of course it paid off, he did get that rifle squad out of there, which is a tiny bit of health, and that was really important. Do not want to lose a rifle squad, so certainly in the game, that would be a crushing blow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, still, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for uh, Contador's fuel income. I mean, he's only got 31 in the bank with an income of 5. I mean, he doesn't even have the plus 5 just outside of his base. And uh, I think he's just played a bit too over-aggressive on the left-hand side. You know, he's, he's completely neglected his own side of the map, and... Uh, like, he opened with a strong, aggressive opening, and then uh, he should have felt fallen back to his side a bit, and then after the damage was done. But he has no fuel connected at all for, like, I think, at all this entire game. Yeah, I could not agree more. Aggressive play is my favorite kind of play, and I just love it when Brits or Wehrmacht or something, one of the more traditional defensive factions, really gets up there and fights. But um, I gotta fault Contador for really not... Um, doing his due diligence and capping some stuff in the back or at least linking up a plus 16 or something because really he's hurting tech-wise. We have grenades out for the Americans and it's just going to get worse and worse for the Wehrmacht as this thing goes on and he has like no resources going for him. So um, nice, nice try, but here comes a grenade on your machine gun and two guys are dead. So you aggression, good, but sacrificing like all of your resources to do it cannot say. Oh wow, did he take a rifle squad out? think so. Losing a victory point. Well, this Volk just escaped with a slither of health. It's just back in the base. Yeah, I think we do have a rifle squad down. So that's uh, that's actually a pretty good coup for Contador. Might be what he needs to get back into this game. Rifle squad down for a Korean army. That is not going to be good. Pretty sure it's a rifle squad. Don't think it's an engineer squad. Don't think he had three. Yeah, that's not good. Don't lose rifle squads, guys. Put those on the bottom of the things to lose. At least under engineers. Well, this is a good flank here. Yeah, especially if he gets a grenade off. Look at that. Runs right into his own grenade. But it does. Oh, kills the machine gun. They steal the machine gun. Oh, he's taking the machine gun. That is not good. This might be the end for Contador right here. Machine gun taken from him. That is tough to come back from. Not only has he wiped out the enemy's machine gun, but he has taken his own and he's setting it up with the Vermont. <laughs> Get this back immediately with all these folks right here. Is that oh he kills it, decrews the machine gun. Oh man, grenade goes in on nobody. Try to fake out the recruit. If okay, well that was probably the shortest time span I've ever seen the Allies hold on to a machine gun. But oh, are they gonna take it back? Oh, man. <laughs> man, this machine gun is switching oh. sides so much in the war, like it doesn't even know where it's come from. This is a Romanian-made machine gun. Those guys started out fighting for the Axis, swapped to fight for the Allies, and then ended up uh, communists. So they were fighting again against the Americans. And we have a GG called, but uh, they're just joking. 
about that. But yes, we have a machine gun stolen. That's a big deal. Don't lose machine guns. That totally makes up for the Lost Rifle Squad. Uh, machine gun obviously doesn't cost quite as much as the Rifle Squad in terms of manpower, 260 versus 270, I believe. But um, yeah, in terms of position, you don't want the Americans to be able to pin you in with that thing if they haven't tech to a weapon. In support center, but they got the machine gun on their side. Who boy, that is. Um, uh, I would be unhappy to be in Contador's shoes right now. Two games down, the machine gun down. That's not good. What's the fuel income for um, Korean? Because I mean, he's had like all the fuel on like the entire map, minus the like the plus five at some point. I mean, Contador only has fifty five in the bank at the moment and hasn't even researched uh, tier two yet. Oh yeah, this is this is depressing. His fuel income is plus 42, and his fuel in the bank is 157. So he is floating so much fuel that he could fill a jacuzzi full of fuel in the back of his house, and he could take a dip in it, and then he would explode because the jacuzzi got too warm and the fuel would ignite. And that wouldn't be good, but he's just going to spend it on something, so that's probably a better thing. And indeed, he's dropped some of it into a triage center, down to 100 fuel. And uh, he is happy and free with all of his... Um, riflemen and engineers and machine guns and triage center and bars. Does he have bars? He doesn't have bars. He's got grenades. Soon he'll have bars, I bet. I'm not sure why he's not buying bars. That would be a nice sort of upgrade for him. Um, it really doesn't have to worry about vehicles from the Wehrmacht very much because the Wehrmacht just now getting this high fuel on the right and even now it's only going up a bit. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess he's sitting pretty no matter what he does and here we have the supply yard going up. So, yeah, this is this is looking really nice for Korean Army. He's played fantastically these past three games, I gotta say. Yeah, we might even see like a, a tank depot rush. I mean, uh, tier two is just about to finish, and uh, but even then, back with a plus five income. So back where you started. I mean, he's just <laughs> connected the plus sixteen now. Um, he's gonna have to go tier two. I mean, like going anything else is suicide. I mean, I'm just interested to see what uh, Korean Army is gonna pull out if he's gonna go for motorport or. Tank Depot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Motor Pro Tank Depot. All right, yeah, even now he's upgrading bars. So he's down to 70 uh, fuel in the bank, and we do have a cutoff coming up by the Wehrmacht, but it might be too little too late now that we have uh, grenades, bars, and uh, supply yard up. That's going to be pretty good. That's going to last him at least through Tier 2 for the Wehrmacht, and even if we do get a uh, half-track or something out, he can always go for stickies. So it's going to be real tough for the Wehrmacht to come back from this one. Although we do have a sniper plugging away. I've hotkeyed him to control one. He's got four kills already. That's nice. Oh, and you make a guest appearance in the chat. Oh yeah, Korean Army asked me a question, and uh, I was AFK, so that's probably why. Well, we get double dose of Biosparks in today's Sunday night fight, and everybody loves the Biosparks, and here we go. Tier 2 for Contador. See if you can pull... A rabbit out of the hat, and I heard a mine go off. That killed some riflemen. Oh, it's just outside his bed. <laughs> yeah, look at those riflemen. They're getting cheeky. Waltzing right into the Wehrmacht base. We'll be taking Berlin by Christmas, I hear. And we have a, a blind flamethrower into the nothingness by a uh, Korean army. Manages to take out a mine uh, at the cutoff point right outside Contador's base. Uh, but Contador does manage to repulse this... Uh, offensive going in. Oh, fantastic flank, I got to say. Um, machine gun fires the rifleman just to the right. Man just to suppress those engineers, because engineers get suppressed so easily, even with this latest patch, which uh, helped quite a bit with the suppression of engineers, made them much more resistant to suppression. Uh, they still get re uh, suppressed by fairly trivial things. Um, not too hard to make the engineers hit the deck. Ooh, he's going for a half-track now, so it seems like... Uh, has he got stickies yet? Because uh, this half-track rush could go horribly wrong if he just decides to run in point-blank range and then uh, get sticky to death. Yeah, well, um, the good news is that I don't believe he has sticky bombs. Uh, he does have off-map artillery. He's chosen infantry company. Um, no sticky bombs yet, but I, I honestly can't see this half-track doing too much for him. Even if he does load it full of some sort of squad to give it the uh, machine guns on the front and the back, um, that's going to be down one squad for him, and it's still not going to do a huge amount of damage. And um, can you put a sniper in a half-track and get both of the machine guns manned? That would be funny. Uh, yeah, this, you can actually. You can do the same with the, an officer. It's quite funny how it duplicates. <laughs> Well, when the sniper or the officer gets in there, one of the other guys who's just hanging around the half-track gets embarrassed. He's like, well, I was just sitting around here having a smoke, but now that somebody else is here, I gotta actually man the machine gun, pretend like I'm doing something. Ooh, look at this. These guys stuck in this house are just trying to tank the damage for the, uh, buy some time for the engineers to cut this thing off. It's, it's really not gonna work, because there's a sniper. Ooh, off-map artillery! Here we go! Down on the machine gun! Here comes the shell! 
Here comes a nothing. Okay, that was exciting. Well, it forces them off the map completely. Um, yeah, in general, I, I wouldn't advise having uh, using off map on machine guns because they actually pack up faster this patch, so uh, they can usually uh, escape in time if you see the flares. But uh, a lot better to use on uh, packs; they're a lot slower to run away. Yeah, I mean, of course, he was he was using that to buy himself a position. Oh, we do have sticky bombs out on the uh, half track. He was buying himself a position there, just trying to force those Wehrmacht units off, and so we could decap these munitions. So this is looking really nice for uh, Korean army right here. He can actually do a bit of damage with his bars if you watch closely. Whenever the bars get a critical hit on the uh, half track, especially on the back, they'll have a chance to damage it. Looks like I'm looking like a liar right now because the health bar is not moving at all. But, uh, I, oh, there we go. There's a hit. See, bars just need critical hits and they can take the half track down. Fun stuff for the half track because they sprung for the cheap armor instead of the expensive armor. And it looks like the door on the back is open and we can see the guy's feet who is firing the machine gun, and he is standing on air. Wehrmacht has researched levitation technology. Oh, he's gone. He's got pioneers. Got out of half track. Wow. So, uh, I, I can almost call this for Korean army right here. Like, look at the map. I, it's just, yeah, this is, this is unfortunate for Contador. Not really having a lot of luck here coming back. I'm surprised with the uh, Koreans teching though, I mean he, he had such a big lead and most people usually go straight to tank deeper, just, you know, finish the game straight away, but he's actually gone for like, he went for triage, bars and, and stickies and then the supply yard upgrade and now with the mook pools, so I'm actually quite surprised with his teching route. Yeah, I mean, as you, I think, mentioned, oh, machine gun finally taken out for Korean army, that stolen MG42 sniped, as I believe you mentioned, he's a big fan of the uh, infantry, so I can understand him sort of hanging around at tier 1 for a while, getting some supply yard stuff, getting some sticky bombs, getting a triage center, he's like, yeah, I could go to tank depot, but then I gotta use tanks, and who likes tanks, right? They're just tanks. Uh, well, I like the capping going on by a Contador, you know, if you can't win, at least turn a lot of the map red or blue. And get the cutoff. The classic Angerville cutoff. We are losing the munitions sector. He's actually got yeah. a lot of territory really fast. Yeah, although those are just strat points, right? So they cap faster and um they don't <laughs> really do much, you know. You get the cutoff, but um aside from that you're not gonna get a lot of income from that, just a little bit of man. So really not gonna help him get too much back in the game. Two snipers, uh, again with the double snipers for Contador, was that a grenade that took out the three Fosfor Deers? That was, uh, this is looking not good. <laughs> Always looking not good. Nice flank going on by the Americans, pushing these snipers off. Mm, yeah, Korean Army's flanking is just impeccable, like, as it usually is. I mean, he'll come from every route possible. I mean, we saw it earlier on, uh, he, just with grenades, he was devastated, but now with bars in the mix and stickies, like, his riflemen are just, like, they have super micro powers, pretty much. And so even with the added vet gain from, um, so I, I guess they changed it in the latest patch. It used to be that for bars, or for grenades and for sticky bombs and for the supply yard upgrades, and I think for bars you would get um, increased vet earning for riflemen, like they would earn more vet for each upgrade you had. I think it's still the same, but maybe it's not for the supply yard upgrades or not for bars or something. They changed it a little bit. Oh yeah, it's just supply it upgrades so. now. It uh, ah yes, like it used to be bars and stickies, and now it's just the, uh, and it used to be supply it upgrades as well. But then they made it just pure supply it upgrades. But they made it the vet even bigger for supply it upgrades for now. Very interesting. So that might help explain why we have a double supply yard upgrade from uh, Korean Army, despite not having any Rangers on the field or anything. Um, the supply yard upgrades can be nice if you have a quite a bit of infantry, especially elite infantry, because once you get quite a few squads, uh, that upkeep starts adding up. So with five uh, rifle squads and two engineers, he is probably worried about upkeep a little bit, but he's probably also looking for the increased vet gain on those riflemen, because uh, once you really start getting some vet on those guys... They get even more deadly, especially with that Vet 2 sticky bomb like you've been talking about in the first match. And uh, yeah, this is looking real bad for Contador, unless he can come back. We've got an M8 out on the field now, so that's going to be a counter to this half-track, although we do have a Pack 38 up. Nice prediction there from Contador. Maybe relieve it's only an M8. I mean, anyone else would have guessed, oh man, it's going to be a Sherman or something. But even though it's, it's the, the overwhelming infantry forces... Uh, Pretty devastating still nonetheless. Yeah, this is this is real tough. So I'm not sure if the Koreans were actually involved in actual world war 
too, but um, given Korean Army's performance, if they had been, or if they were, I imagine they were extremely effective, and um, wow, these snipers really racking up the kills. Eight kills on one Oh, he hits a mine! The eight kill sniper backs into a mine, and the sniper with 20 kills just says, you know, that's what you have for being a rookie, you only had eight kills. Deal with it. Yeah, this sniper so is gonna bite the dust anytime soon. I mean, there's another mine like in between the pack and the sniper. Uh, the sniper might get killed by anything right now. Oh, oh, revealed! He has no health. He has no health. He's retreating. Engineers aren't fast enough to flame him. Riflemen are firing it. Oh, wow! M8 curveball shot from the main gun. How often does that hit? Never, but it nails the sniper. Very impressive job by the M8. He's also doing fantastic around these two packs. I'm not sure how this M8 has survived the entire time, but uh, wow, well, he's gonna have to die now. So, hoo -hoo. lucky there, M8. So, I was talking about a little about the 5% uh, bug being fixed when I was introducing myself back in the first match. Um, so, this is, this M8 just uh, lived past two or three hits when it had no health, but um, you notice each time those hits hit it, the, each time the Pac-38 hit the M8, it killed something. First it took out the engine, then it took out the uh, main gun destroyed. In the past, the 5% bug, it would just be like, bam, hits the M8, nothing happens. Bam, hits the M8, nothing happens. But this time the M8 was pretty much crippled by the time it died. So, um, yeah, nice to see that more or less fixed. But uh, traded an M8 for a Pac-38 and a half-track. How, how would you say about that trade? He did have the fully upgraded M8, so he sunk a lot of munitions into it. But, uh, I don't know, bought, it, bought the half-track with it? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, two snipers did die in the engagement as well, one to the mine, another one yeah, to, the, true. to the crazy M8 shot. I mean, I'm not sure even how physics in this game is crazy, but, you know, they just curved and decided to kill that sniper. So, yeah, still a good engagement, I, I'd say. I mean, especially with the... I mean, if you look at the territory, like, the income must be, like, crazy good with the munitions and stuff. Like, you could probably replace that instantly. Yeah, right now, Korean Army's uh, munitions income is 6,432, and his fuel income is 9,281. So that's pretty good. Um, this could be tough for Contador to come back from that. He probably has something like 0.5. Oh, and a decreed machine gun, too. Although he can't crew it, because he doesn't have any uh, roughmen around who have more than four people. Or more than three people, I suppose. He's running right into the Wehrmacht base. That is, uh... Yeah, this is, this is ugly. Well, that sniper almost started in retreat as well, so that would have just added insult to injury. But I think VPs will take out, I think, on this game. Uh, you know, there's only just under 50 left, and uh, Korean Army's just about to uh, complete capping super fast drain again. I mean, Korean has done, like, crazy amounts of flanking, held insane amount of territory with all three VPs in every single game so far. He's just all over the place. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy's flanking abilities, that just, I don't know... Yeah, he has earned it. I mean, we have seen fantastic play from him. No OF factions or anything like that that people were predicting. He's just textbook American, textbook Wehrmacht play, hitting Contador at every point. Um, fantastic flank, fantastic job doing his engagements, and, um, you know, f almost flawless play. I'm not sure flawless is the right word to describe it, but masterful is really, uh, really sums it up. He's just done a great job countering everything that he's seen from his opponent. Uh, look at this grenade going in on a decrude, er, unset up machine gun. Man, just wonderful play all three games, and I really got to hand it to him. He's done a great job. And I can't wait to see the matchup that uh, he fights up against in the next Sunday night fight, which I guess is going to be in January or something. Uh, yeah, the next matchup will be in one of the first weeks of January, I think after New Year's. So that'll be against Siberian as well. So uh, remember this right. Korean army did beat Siberian in, in a tournament 2-0 in the past. Um, but I think that was when he was using OF factions. And that ends the replay. So we'll have the uh, Axis w sorry, Allies win video. So concludes our third contender bout. Uh, Korean Army shows the first 3-0 in this season so far. Every other game has gone to an ace game. But uh, 
he has shown that he is definitely worthy of uh, taking a crack at the current champion, Siberian, who uh, definitely has his work cut out for him. I mean, they are both clan mates, so, you know, nice seeing an inter-clan uh, champion title fight in the future. But, uh, yeah, so this week, though, Korean Army has really just uh, earned the spot to be uh, the next contender. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Taiko for uh, joining us this uh, this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, Sunday Night Fights are really keeping the COH community alive. Can't say I enjoy anything as much as I enjoy watching these things from you guys. So, great job. And, uh, of course, thanks to Army Police iFunk, who I speak on behalf of. Uh, catch us, sorry, we won't be here next week or the week after, since that will be Christmas and New Year's. So, on that note, I wish everyone Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, spend time with your families. I'd actually like to do an SNF during Christmas, but that's because I'm hardcore. But, obviously, you know, you guys wouldn't be able to make it, so there'd be no point. But, until uh, after New Year's, uh, this will be a small two-week break, so we'll see you guys then, and uh, catch you then for the title fight.